This is Pat Windrow at the Cable Easel painting a part of the face which I could have muffed and therefore I thought I'd do it while nobody was watching and uh, you know Julia Child does that she drops roasts on the floor and then you never know it because she doesn't really ever tell you however I didn't drop the roast on the floor but I did sort of try to work out the face of this little Santa Claus because it's complicated and I don't want to lose the I uh, don't want to lose my audience I want the audience to remain interested in what I'm doing so you're in on the business of putting the highlights uh, on this and the eyebrows which I think is probably just as interesting as seeing the agonize over the face and uh, and to put the um, and to make the uh, make the eyes sort of bright and shiny. So this is part two of something which I have called Saint Nick Study. Uh, the Saint Nick Study means that I've gotten a piece of ceramic ware here that I brought up from Virginia, and I'm using it as a prop for the season. The um, uh, the season is uh, absolutely um, going uh, out of control with decoration and with uh, all sorts of things that have uh, that have, have taken over since uh, since Halloween, and we are now uh, right uh, dead center of this uh, of this enormous uh, commercial push, which of course um, I, I find uh, well it, it could it could make me happier if it did not uh, if it wasn't so intensively commercial. How However, um, the little the little figure here is sort of cute, and I'm hoping that he can that I can make it make it you know as attractive as he as he is in person. There is um, there's a great deal of, of, of uh, challenge to uh, to pulling a thing like this off in public uh, and to try and make it uh, to try and make it as attractive and as cute as it, as it is in real life. However. Um, uh, the uh, the uh, application of the uh, of the shadows of the robe was where I left it the last time, and then I then I sort of cheated and got involved in doing this uh, the um, the face. Uh, the hair, of course, is uh, supposed to be white, but it actually turns out to be somewhat gray. Uh, uh, be, because of the, of, the, uh, of the intense amount of shadows, so let's get, let's just put the hair in, and then get the uh, the interpretation of all those flows. It's a lovely little piece that this person has done, and um, it, uh, it's it's uh, there are many many companion pieces, but uh, the most successful one is this uh, is this uh, cera uh, ceramic uh, and rather heavy, and it's about 15 inches high. In case you in case you wanted just about the size of it. And it's, um, it's, uh, the detail is nicely done, and it's, uh, the best part about it is, is that it's made in America. Um, I'm, I'm certainly conscious of the fact of the wonderful quality of things that come from overseas, but I also like the idea that here in America, uh, we are actually capable of doing things as well, sometimes um, far better, than elsewhere. But um, America was mesmerized by the European market uh, a very long time ago and uh, went under some delusion for a long time that they couldn't do anything as well as they did in Europe, which of course is just, um, is just not so at all. So uh, with all the uh, trade and things taking place uh, in the news, um, I think that it's always, it's, it's always interesting to talk about the, um, the events at hand. Here is this wonderful deep shadow underneath this, um, underneath this uh, hood here, which gives it an, an, an immediate three-dimensional look. 
because the ground of red was put on in part one of this program and now it, the paint has set well enough for the part two to come and to and here is the here is the other side with this very deep shadow telling you about how how far inside this piece goes um, uh, the uh, the need to pay attention to all of these uh, of these uh, shadowy details is what gives it the three-dimensional look. Uh, the three-dimensional look is the whole challenge of painting. How do you do that? And um, the practice, of course, is a very good idea, but it's also observation. And uh, many, many programs do not um, keep uh, harping on the idea of observation. To observe it, because while you observe it, you learn something about it. And um, while you observe whether it's whether it's just uh, whether it's a potato or it's a complex figure such as this, you learn something about it whenever you investigate its details. And the details here, of course, such as I'm doing right now, are the folds in this fabric. Uh, the uh, it's the rehearsal for doing folds in other fabric, real fabric. So. Maybe this is the uh, maybe this is the actual uh, point of this particular session to 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 tell you how when you want to practice uh, this kind of uh, uh, fabric thing you do it first with a for, with a still piece uh, and uh, you you uh, this may be the time for me to point out and remark about how when f when those uh, remarkable portraits of the kings of Europe, uh, the Spanish and the French and, and the English, were done by the painters and they are standing there in those uh, highly highly embroidered and jeweled robes with fur and, uh, and gold braid and you name it, it's on it. Mm, those people did not pose in that. Uh, it was done from mannequins on which all that clothing was, uh, was draped and the uh, Painter took uh, weeks, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes years, to um, to paint the cloth and the um, and the details of the jewelry and so on that was worn by the monarchs. There's a very famous painting of the coronation of Napoleon in which he is there in his oh fur robes and she's in her in her bejeweled diadems and so on. And um, the the painter David that did it worked on it for years. It was set up in his studio for him to um, to work. Uh, unencumbered on those folds. Nobody posed in that. Uh, I think it's a rather interesting piece of um, sort of an interesting uh, look into the uh, the manner in which painting is in fact done. Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, deep shadow over here of this particular. Uh, of this particular fold, and it could never have been if you had invented that. And down here, of course, it goes under, therefore it's in shadow, and therefore some darkness comes down here. I'm hoping that uh, the, uh, the transmission is clear enough so that you'll be able to see how this blending takes place and makes this believable. So, um, during the break, I'm probably going to cheat a little bit more and improve uh, the face, but um, I think that my wearing a red sweater is really amazingly well thought out. <laughs> seems to go rather well with what's happening. Uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to now uh, try to get all this red out of my brush so that I can uh, start to put some of the fabric in. If I get if I finish this it'll be a, a, a miracle because um, it is um, it is pro probably as complex a piece of uh, a piece of engineering in, in paint that I have ever undertaken and uh, I'm going to give this a slightly rosy glow here because the highlight has got to be white uh, because it's a very shiny ceramic so this this color is just a little bit under white uh, which is the way you do ceramics that uh, white ceramic uh, can't possibly have a white highlight if it starts out by being white. I've, I've, I've talked about that before uh, doing, this, uh, doing this program that you keep all of the white stuff in ceramics under white and I mean just a, a, just a shade below it so that when you finally put the, the bright highlight on uh, you will believe that that is a white object. Uh, down here, um, the uh, the gold, of course, is uh, I don't have gold. The gold comes in tubes, but it's sort of a, it's a little bit cheating and it's a little bit tacky to use gold paint where you're going to be doing a gold uh, interpretation of gold in painting. So you have to try to make it look like gold. So if uh, 
if the, if I uh, do it now, then I will not be running out of time. And I think that's probably a good idea. The basic color of gold is a kind of a nothing, zero, a very unhappy looking tan, something brown. So uh, I'm, I'm mixing an unhappy looking tan, something brown right here as the basis for the, for the gold. It's, uh, it uh, definitely has yellow, a little bit of brown, a touch of orange, and a touch of white. And this is the basic tone, probably, if it's a little bit dark, but this is the somewhat the, the um, primary color that I would put on for this gold sash. And then, of course, the highlights are going to make it, uh, pr presumably, uh, with any luck at all, are going to make it look gold. Here is a, um, the basic tone for it. Uh, and uh, believe me, um, you, uh, you would take your time doing this, but w I gloss over a great deal of these, uh, of these things that I'm doing so that you can get the essence of it. Uh, doing it, um, doing it uh, for real and seriously uh, would take blending and time, but I wanted you to know that the, if you have to paint gold, and I have been asked that time, that many times before, if you have to paint gold, you have to break it down into the component parts of what what makes uh, what makes it appear to be gold so this is all quite dark down here too and then with the addition of some white and some pale yellow I will see if I can get you to um, believe uh, that this is in fact a highlight that is turning into uh, into the dark uh, speaking about highlights, uh, there is a uh, uh, there is also uh, a lesson to be learned in this particular uh, um, endeavor of painting from a ceramic piece that all portraits should uh, sh uh, you should be able to understand the technique of making a cheek turn when you wanted to by working on a uh, from a ceramic piece there are there are uh, the busts of people well known people and there are photographs of busts of people there's a wonderful one from a french sculptor called oudon who did uh, probably the most remarkable um, a portrait of jefferson uh, way back then, that was he was a contemporary, and uh, there are photographs of the piece. It's, I believe, in the National Gallery in Washington. But there are photographs of the uh, Oudon portrait of Jefferson, which, in my opinion, is a is a portrait lesson uh, right there, ready made for you to observe. Uh, it's 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 um it's a wonderful thing to get involved in that kind of um, observation of those pieces. And um, H O U D O N is the man's name. And he, uh, he was the um, master marble portraitist of his time. And this is what I'm doing here is a somewhat uh, uh, very, uh, a very cursory uh, investigation of how you do portraits. Even though it's the face of a, little, of a little Santa Claus figure, it's got all the elements that would come to the finaling, finalizing of a, of a human portrait. And an awful lot of people say that they would love to paint portraits because they're interested in the people, but they don't dare start it, and they should dare start it by using this suggestion of mine, that you use um, that you use a frozen piece to find out how to turn a cheek and um, make a nose stick out and make eyes look like they are not just um, uh, holes in a piece of clay. There, um, the, uh, the highlight in a piece of gold is usually pale yellow. I'm going to do it white because the lights in the studio here make it look white. But ho hopefully with any luck at all, there will be a, a, slight, uh, a slight shine to this. Um, and. Um, uh, a little shine up here on the knot. The knot has a, it's, it's, it should be a yellow shine. Let me see if I can make it a yellow shine, which is better. The, the little knot's got something of a shine. It doesn't work too well. Uh, maybe during the break I'll, um, I will make it better. Um, I'm going to be coming back in, uh, in uh, December, but it's going to be after Christmas. At that time, we are planning uh, to uh, we are planning a uh, a severe snowfall, uh, uh, and uh, if the severe snowfall does take place, and it had better because um, we've ordered it, uh, then there will be some nice studies of snow painting, and and I think that studies of snow painting ought to be done in the in the winter time when the possibility of people going out and actually working from life are at hand. And we have such remarkable automobiles now that you can let the motor run uh, and um, keep warm so that you can go out in the field and 
work right there from life. Uh, snow paintings are uh, one of the more, you know, there's one right here behind me, uh, done down out there in Stony Brook at a place called East Farm when those, when those horses were out there, but um, it, uh, it's time to do another one. Underneath here, there's a rather intense shadow under here, which will make it stick out maybe even more. This, there, there's that horse. The, um, this shadow uh, under, the, uh, under the sash here is going to stick out even more. Well, it looks like um, there's need to take a very short break, so I'll do that now and come back in a matter of moments. I thought, told you I'd be working on the face. I actually stood up in order to be able to get closer to it so that the face is more, is more, um, well, what's the term? More appealing, I suppose. Um, faces, of course, are, um, are a bloody nuisance to do because uh, so many things can go wrong in such a short space of time. However, I've got me here a, uh, I've got me here a highlight in the eyes, which is probably the most important thing. Highlight on the nose, and the fact that the nose sticks out a little bit more because of the shadow on the side. That's what was missing before. That's why he looked like he was, had absolutely no face, no, no form whatsoever. Let's get on to the, um, let's get on, and anybody who has some sort of strange delusion that this thing is going to be finished in the, uh, in the second half is, uh, gonna have to just, um, uh, trust me that, uh, it will be finished in my studio. Certainly not here. But here's the way you would interpret the hair and try and follow it as closely as possible because it is, after all, a ceramic interpretation and the hair is very definitely a pattern of the piece and, it, uh, and the oil is now wet. That's why, you can, that's why I can uh, run these lines through here and have them sort of blend nicely as, they, as, they go, uh, as, as, they, um, as I pull the brush across the, uh, the wet white paint. Uh, yeah, the uh, white paint was put on in order to prepare the background and I think that the general effect is probably, uh, is probably acceptable the uh, hair has a shadow being cast by the uh, by the um, hood and um, the um, the need to make it just as accurate as possible just a general feeling of it there, the interpretation is is going to come into play here quite uh, quite strongly uh, and uh, the, uh, the advice of course is always that uh, less is more if you put uh, if there are more uh, uh, more of these uh, of these lines of the hair uh, is not is no need to put them in because the uh, the illusion is what you're after we're after illusion anyway to get back to to get back to the holiday thing that is happening um, just about everywhere. I mean, the entire world is in on this, and they do it in different ways. But um, uh, in, in this country, we do it with a uh, with an enormous uh, push towards the purchase of things. But we also we also push another nice part of it, and that is to for for people to get together. And there are families that um, uh, the, whose members of the families live apart, and uh, Christmas seems to be the time that that kind of thing can uh, can uh, the the, the visiting and that to me is probably one of the more important things about the 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 possibility of this particular day being set aside as a as a as a visiting of the family day uh it's um it's um it's an opportunity to to um 
to make amends if there are any uh, problems and to also uh, to uh, show children the importance of being able to stay in contact with friends and family, not just family, but also friends. So um, there, there are many good sides to it, a lot of possibilities uh, for good times, a lot of possibilities for depression. Uh, they, uh, they, the um, psychiatrists have uh, said for years that, uh, uh, that Christmas and holiday times is a time when tremendous depression can set in, and uh, that's a shame, but uh, it's also up to the people who don't suffer from that to try to maybe alleviate the people who do. Here is the shadow of the um, of the beard, uh, that is, uh, and as you see, the interpretation of the beard is very loose, uh, just to give you the general feeling of it. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nicely done piece, uh, and I would certainly not try to improve upon it, but there are some waves in here that are missing. So, um, the, uh, the symbol, the symbol of Saint Nick, uh, it, I believe that it is a Scandinavian one. Uh, hence the, uh, hence the, the, the fur on the costume. It certainly isn't anything to do with the wise men in, um, in, uh, in uh, the Far East, where the weather is uh, most of the time extremely warm. Uh, the, the, um, the costuming of this Saint Nick figure comes from the, uh, the Norse countries, I believe and uh, the jumble and mix-up of all of these uh, different uh, traditions going on um, is of course very confusing to an awful lot of people more confusing to me i suppose because i think about it more than maybe some and i'm far more interested in the legends of this thing than i am in the actual event so uh, there is a there is a sort of a bah humbug curmudgeon attitude that i have about this However, I'm perfectly happy to go along, go along with the gag and put my little lights out. I love the lights. I like putting lights in the windows, and I think that the the uh, use of evergreens and plants is just exciting. And I sort of sort of try to do that uh, uh, along with the uh, along with the griping and complaining about the silliness of some of the aspects of this holiday. Um, so. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm in the process of making a number of things, uh, decorating some furniture pieces for friends who like the way I decorate them, so they'll get that. And, and I usually don't, I'm usually not able to package my uh, presents in paper with ribbons. I usually have to have somebody uh, with muscles uh, uh, lift it out of the car and bring it indoors under uh, under great ceremony because it's usually too big. But anyway, here we are. The uh, The interpretation of this little figure is um is a uh because it is the season, and I wanted to come up with with something that was um, the, that was amusing as well as interesting, but uh, at the same time there is um, there's no reason why uh, a Christmas presents uh, to children in the family could not comprise also a very simplified set of paints, uh, a simplified uh, canvas such as a canvas board, and maybe um, a tape or two of my of my show in case these uh, children have not seen it and they express the desire. If anybody has, uh, I don't have the tapes for sale. I, I rely upon people's ingenuity to go out and uh, I mean to to tape my programs because they are in in their own way timeless. Uh, there is no timing on. On my program, they're not going to wear out, um, and um, I, th I do believe that it would be uh, probably a good collection to have. I have them. Uh, I rarely look at them uh, because uh, there's a certain embarrassment to hear me uh, do what I do and say what I say um, and to repeat myself. So I mean, I don't have to, but the people who who uh, want to get something out of these lessons. Uh, um, may be able to find a tape that would be interesting and, and give them to people with a set of paints. I do not also either have a set of paints with my name on it or such as Mr. Ross does, but um, I certainly have got a sheet of, um, of uh, instructions and what to buy as a beginner uh, that you are, is available through this station if you write. And um, uh, Judy will send it to you gladly under uh, at your request. So here I'm preparing once again the background for doing uh, another uh, another um, part of this piece that may or may not have some highlights on it. And because the, the, there is very little time, I think I'm going to try to um, to show you how the highlights should be done on the main figure. Let me let me separate these fingers here for just a moment. Uh, these figures, uh, these fingers have to be logical. They're holding on to that stick, and there is a separation of these fingers. Let's see if that if that's going to work. Uh, well, it's interpretive, and it's nothing more than a demonstration, as I said earlier. And these fingers also, the thumb goes up, and oh, there's the bell. Let's get the bell in there. And let's get the basic coat of the bell. 
so that then I can put the, uh, the highlight in and make that bell shine and show you the, the, the wondrous uh, event of light and shade on, on, on an object when you're dealing with paint. This little figure is ringing a bell, and I believe that um, the, uh, the legends of the Norse people and the Christmas tree, there are no Christmas trees that grow in Israel or in Jerusalem. So the Christmas tree legend comes from the northern countries. Apparently there was a need to be secretive about about certain aspects of the uh, about the uh, birth of Jesus and so the secrecy was done by bringing symbols into the house one of them I suppose was in fact the Christmas tree uh, but I defy you to be able to make any sense or logic out of any of it however uh, we all play the game at least we play the game once a year and sometimes uh, too early <laughs> uh, here is um here is the highlight of the bell just on the edge here. Uh, that's all that seems to be visible in, uh, in my reference material. And then there's a, rather, there's a rather nice highlight right here in the middle of the yellow. So it should, it should try and make it shine. If it doesn't, we'll try it again some. We'll try again some. Oh, there it is. It's much clearer uh, on, your, on your monitor. There is a lot of, there's a lot of light hitting it right here. Uh, as insignificant as this may be, it's an object lesson for the rest of it that all of these things happen because of light and shade and all you're doing is to play around with those two elements light and shade the thumb of course comes up like so and uh, i will not get to the ivy i don't uh, to the ivy to the holly i don't think and where the holly legend came in is also another an, another another good one uh, and the mistletoe thing and the kissing on the uh, it's incredible um and so uh as i say i'll play the game uh, uh, but never stop questioning it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, um, I've had three boys and they all fell for it when they were supposed to, when they were little critters, and then they all uh, uh, managed to carry on the traditions themselves because they were, because they were introduced to it so early. Uh, there are there is other holidays. The uh, the festival of the lights for the uh, for the Hanukkah season is also a tremendous amounts of legend and tremendous amounts of complicated and apparently uh, um, uh, illogical references. However, we are we, we it's all, it's all rather fun. Here's a highlight that takes place on this so-called white robe. Uh, Santa Claus is wearing a white robe. Uh, I, the basic uh, coat of that white robe was off-white, which means that when the pure white is put on, it will in fact probably shine uh, or give the illusion of shining. And that's about all that, uh, that's about exactly all that, uh, all that this highlight gets. There's a little highlight along this belt here, and that tells you that it's ceramic. And there's a nice, big, uh, very flashy highlight up here where this cloak, uh, this uh, hood of the cloak, turns the corner and runs down this edge right there. Well, I uh, suppose that we can now probably begin to wind up this program, wishing you a, a pleasant and decent uh, holiday, and uh, um, uh, hopefully more than anything else, I suppose, rather than the quantity of presents, but the safety of the holiday. Uh, the uh, the tragedies that take place uh, during holidays is is just unacceptable, and so I suppose uh, this will be the, my my safety message. But if you do if you do in fact have to go far afield, uh, be sure that you uh, that you do it as safely as possible. I'm going to wind this up now, putting in highlights, and hope to hopefully that um, this has been as interesting for you to watch as it has been for me, and that all of my all of my personal opinions about the season are just taken with whatever grain of salt you may choose. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and have, uh, have yourself a jolly old time. Bye-bye. See you next time.